So, the government has decided to give millions of your dollars to Planned Parenthood. Because you all wanted that, didn't you? You were saying, please. Lila Rose is a pro-life activist who, in a series of audacious and, I think, brilliant undercover videos, exposed the reality behind this organization. Welcome to you from Washington, D.C. How are you? Hi, Michael. Good. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm very well. Now, you, you seem so innocuous. So, I mean, you, you dared to go <laughs> after a, a very powerful organization, Planned Parenthood. Just to set this up for, for, for you Americans, because you don't know very much, uh, well, I think it's $6 million that our conservative government wants to give to Planned Parenthood, uh, allegedly to help where abortion is not legal in the world. But, of course, it's all a big lie, because what that will do is just liberate other money for abortions elsewhere. Anyway, the whole thing is extremely wrong. But what did you get up to? What did you, what did you do to make Planned Parenthood so angry with you? Well, Planned Parenthood in the U.S. is the biggest abortion chain, and internationally as well as in Canada, they're pushing a very radical pro-abortion ideology. And for the last four years, since a college student and I just graduated college, our organization, Live Action, has been doing undercover investigations that demonstrate how Planned Parenthood is not only the biggest abortion chain with this radical pro-abortion ideology, but that they're also ruthlessly targeting women, particularly young, vulnerable women, particularly the victims of sexual abuse for abortions that ultimately further the abuse cycles that they're in. So I've gone undercover, Michael, posing as an underage sex abuse victim. Mm -hmm. And Planned Parenthood staffers across the country tell me that they don't care that I'm sexually abused, but that they just want to get me a secret abortion and they won't report the abuse to the police or to Child Protective Services. Instead, they'll help the abuser work with my abuser to get that secret abortion. We've got some video here that we're going to play, and then we'll chat about what we're actually seeing. Let's have a look at that now, please. But so mainly, like, on the paperwork, there's going to be a point that asks, um, you know, like, are you sexually active, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. If they're under a certain age, and we're kind of, in, you know, in, me and my other counselor, like, for the most part, we want as little information as possible. We want as little information as possible because we're involved in the game. Excuse my word. Once we get once the practitioner, she's a little bit more anal, so she likes to kind of dig, dig a little bit more. Now, what was going on there? That video you just saw, we released, live action release this year, and it showed a Planned Parenthood counselor, a manager, counseling our actors who are posing as the sex traffickers of girls as young as 14, how to skirt the law and get government discounts to further enslave these victims, these 14-year-old victims of trafficking. So this just shows how the biggest abortion chain, how Planned Parenthood, is not concerned with protecting women, but instead they're willing to work even with the abusers of very young and vulnerable women, the traffickers to get more abortions happening and to get those little girls on powerful birth control so then they can be further enslaved by these abusers and sold for sex. So th th there's no counseling and advice and sit down and talk about what's going on. We have to empower you and liberate you and make sure you're not a victim anymore? Exactly. I mean, the ideology here, it's so blatant how anti-woman it is. Not only are they anti-choice in that 98% of Planned Parenthood services in the U.S. go towards abortion, not towards prenatal care, not towards pregnancy resources, but they're anti-woman in the sense that when a woman comes in, a young woman, a, sick, a victim of sexual abuse, they're not concerned with the woman holistically. They look at the woman as a potential abortion market item. So this woman, we can have an abortion done on, on her or this little girl. So when we do undercover investigations, Michael, and we show Planned Parenthood basically covering up abuse, working with traffickers, lying to women, manipulating women, coercing women. It's all because they're trying to up their abortion numbers and push a radical ideology on women. There was another case, I'm not sure if, if this involved you in any way, uh, where someone phoned Planned Parenthood and said, I want to donate money, but only for black babies to abort. And they repeated this over and over again, I only want black babies aborted, uh, very horribly racist. And the person on the other yes. end of the phone checked it and checked and said, yep, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Were you involved in that? Yes, that was a live action investigation. And basically in that video, we had an actor posing as a racist, asking Planned Parenthood development offices and seven different affiliates saying, we want to donate to do a race-based abortion. We want to donate to kill off 
uh, black children, basically. And the Planned Parenthood workers that work in development and fundraising were excited about it. They said, yes, we'll take the money. They even said, we have special funds already set up that can target minority women or target low-income women for abortion. So this is part of a eugenic vision that they've had from the founding in, back in the 1930s, Michael. They wanted to use sterilization, birth control at first, and later on abortion to limit populations of the undesirables, kind of what, like what uh, Hitler was doing in Nazi Germany. They were doing it in a much more subtle way at the founding of Planned Parenthood with Margaret Sanger, the founder, wanting to use birth control, sterilization, and later on abortion to target minority populations to target women of low income, to target those that were not well educated enough or had a bad DNA code according to them and, their, and, and what they believed was the best in order to make sure that these people were not going to have children and not procreating. Yeah. So that ideology is still being lived out today in the way that they operate. And if anyone out there is saying, oh, this isn't true, it's extremism, uh, if I can just well, boast mildly for a moment, I, I wrote a biography of H.G. Wells a few years ago, which The New Yorker, hardly a friend of the pro-life movement, said was one of the best biographies of the year. He was very Excellent. close, Wells, to Margaret Sanger and Sidney and Beatrice mm. Webb and so on, and George Bernard Shaw to a large extent. And they were, it, it, it was pre-Nazi, of course, they weren't directly anti-Semitic, for example, although there were tinges of that, but they believed very strongly that the mentally and physically handicapped, actually homosexual, um, anyone they thought was deviant, had to be wiped out. They would stop, not allowed to breed, and if any, and maybe even euthanize. I mean, they, they, they aggressively mm. believed in this, and she founded Planned Parenthood. Exactly. And you're talking about a reality that was very talked about, written about back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and then it became less popular post-World War II, but they're still living out that eugenic, re eugenic vision to kill off people that are undesirable or to make sure that they're contracepting or to make sure they're not procreating because certain people shouldn't be born is that ideology. Yeah. And that's being lived out in the organization today in the way that they target minority women. A lot of abortion clinics are in minority neighborhoods in their advertisement campaigns because they see this as a way to clean yeah. up our society when really they're targeting and completely taking away ultimately the choice of women, of all women. How progressive. Now, I should let people know, uh, tomorrow we have the Conservative backbench MP who is opposing the government on Planned Parenthood. And remember, $6 million of your money going to this organization. Uh, Lila Rose, thank you for what you do and thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much, Michael.